So welcome to Pure Talk Season 5. I can't believe I'm saying Season 5. That's just ridiculous. We started this at the beginning of COVID and with Season 1, which we didn't even know was going to be a thing. We didn't even call it a season. <laughs> we just called it like Leslie talking to people. And now we're on Season 5, which is really, really exciting. And Season 6 is already formulating in my head. And I'm delighted to be joined today, and we're actually in the gallery at Hastings Contemporary by Liz Gilmore, who is the director here. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. Um, it is a bit of a stormy, windy day. <laughs> it is. It, it, yeah, in a way, seaside towns are the most romantic on days like this, aren't they? But certainly it's bracing to actually walk through the door and get here. <laughs> it was bracing. I parked in the Rock and Roll car park, and I've never seen the waves quite that close. Yes. <laughs> We're high up, you can relax. Yeah, <laughs> are we okay? We're not going to be flooded. No, no. <laughs> this gallery was quite, um, quite controversial when it was built and it started life, its first incarnation as the Jerwood Gallery mm. and now Hastings Contemporary. And you arrived, were you completely unaware of the controversy or did you just arrive full of joy? And <laughs> I, I think when I first heard the idea of a gallery coming here. I was sitting in Arts Council's offices, it was years ago, and recognising how transformative a gallery would be. Uh, my experience at Arts Council was always mm. there will be voices who have concerns about change. Mm. And it's the unknown, I think, that triggers that. So certainly I was not unaware that there may be some, some loud voices, um, maybe only a few of them, but, but quite a loud volume in their concern, and understandably, this is the most incredible context. So who wouldn't have a view on a building being here? Um, so when I arrived, yes, we were, the, the project was at the point of groundbreaking, and I have this incredible image of Maggie Hamling, the artist, mm -hmm. sitting on a bulldozer, um, cigarette in one arm, and uh, driving, driving the machine at the same time. And, and it was a really special moment. This was um, 12 years ago. The gallery's mm -hmm. been open for 10 now, uh, but of course it took a, a year and a half to build. So yes, I, I, I was aware that it would be um, impactful, but rightly so. This is a gallery for Hastings. It was so important. I think culture and the arts, um and creativity generally has um, a place in being a change maker. Mm. It is. I think, um, I, I think I always said at the beginning, a gallery isn't salvation. And uh, often people assume it will be one thing or the other. It will solve all the issues of a place. And of course, it's, it's part of a joined up package. The mm. thing that attracted me and felt that this gallery was, was going to be really special for Hastings was that this is a culturally vibrant town. It didn't suddenly import culture. In fact, it galvanized it, that there are so many artists living here. And many had connection directly with London or with other seaside towns, regional towns, and not so much to create that critical mass within Hastings itself. And so for this to be a cultural hub, I think that's always been core to its mission and to our sightlines of recognising what it could do for Hastings. Mm. I, I completely concur with the, you're not just dropping something in mm. and trying to make something out of nothing. I mean, we were just chatting about Belfast, weren't we, and mm. living history. I think Hastings is palpable in its creative life, whether whatever aspect of the arts that you're particularly interested in, whether that's music or the visual arts, it is a really dynamic, vibrant place, exciting. I remember the first time I brought my husband here, who comes from North London and, and really is not a cultural, um, that is not a cultural centre. And I brought him, I didn't realise, on um, the 31st of October, and we walked down the old, through the old town, and he was literally walking along with his mobile phone saying, people will not believe <laughs> this is happening. It's like being in a film set. Yes. And I said, yeah, but this is people's real lives. Mm. This is what, you know, this is their lived experience. And that's really important to recognise, isn't it? That, you know, this is a re real place with people really living their lives here. 
They, they are. I think Hastings stands out for being a place where uh, grown men and women can, can, can act, play like children. Uh, that there's sort of a festival almost for every week and uh, it's great fun, there's an energy to it. it it's unique in a way and uh, to put a gallery here, to uh, bring people together, to create that, you know, to embed that sense of place and, and it does root back. Uh, the first time I stood on the site that this gallery is built I think my son was 11 months old. He's 18 now. Yeah. And uh, all those years ago, it, w it was a coach park. Um, and that yeah. um, is such a transformation. But actually, when one looks out to sea or to see the cliffs either side, you realise um, that you can almost feel that sense of 1066 history. Mm. It's always been an important place. Hastings had some of the early banks. Um, it, it, it's over time, in a way, um, the centres have moved away from the seaside, but Hastings was there mm. right at the beginning. It, it sort of it, it's so symbolic about the sort of very beginning of of our society as we know it. I love that that it's on the edge. People say to me, "Why do you love Hastings?" I mm. said, "It's on the edge. It is. We're on the edge. We're on the edge of the UK, mm. and we have that tra histor historical transition, don't we? Mm. You're right there, and." this gallery is right on the edge. We're, we're really interested in that exact um, aspect of the gallery, that mm. it's unique location, and it is. It's by the oldest, you know, we're flanked by the oldest and largest fishing fleet, mm. beach-launched fishing fleet in Europe. Uh, that's astonishing in itself, the sense of community. There's even a little mm. fox that comes by oh, <laughs> every day. And uh, it's a very special place. You feel its history. We know um, the soldiers didn't just come in and, and you know, Norman's Bay as it's so yeah. named, but scattered along the coast. Mm. Um, and, and so it's been a very special place, a very significant place for, for a long time. Mm. Mm. So you've been here for 10 years and you've been here mm. for 10 years, the whole 10 years. And often people move on, don't they? They kind of transition off. You, you arrived because you saw it in its very start coming and you thought this would be a special thing to do. What keeps you here? I think Hastings is a really difficult place to leave actually. <laughs> it's uh, the osmosis effect, it sort of somehow embeds itself in, into your soul. Mm. Uh, of course I've thought about that many times and um, opportunities come and go but there's something so compelling and the gallery has been through its transformations. It's, it's so mm. different, the original gallery that we opened back in 2012. Mm. It has transitioned into a fully independent charity and uh, it's just on the cusp of the building being given to the town, a really significant moment for the further uh, of embedding so what we can do to embed the gallery within its community. So I think um, it's always, it's always, it, these evolutions have created um, the next phase for it and I feel like my, my work hasn't quite been completed yet, so here I here I Very, stand. very good yeah. to hear because it would yeah. be, I don't know whether I would recognise the gallery <laughs> without Liz being here. I remember my very first, you know, when it very first opened and coming to the opening and you were here and you've been... Yeah, the solid kind of underpinning of the growth. And when we arrived today, I was saying it was so funny because in those early days there was you and one other and then two others and it was a very small team. But now mm. it feels really like it's got a future. Yes. A very, very solid future. Thank you. And yes, I, I think the, the team, some of the team members have been with the gallery almost all through that period. Um, and others, it's a relatively new team mm. that, uh, and, and board of trustees. And mm. let's not forget, we're a charity. Yeah. Uh, the gallery is run, in essence, by um, a, a group of incredible people, our, our trustees, who give their time for free. I think that's mm. uh, such a generous thing to do. They're incredibly passionate and committed, and their broad-ranging skills really have helped strengthen the gallery. Mm. We transition to be a charity it took a bit of time, but sort of the process began roughly in 2018. And uh, when we reopened as Hastings Contemporary uh, and transitioned into the charity, I think uh, new trustees have recently come on board as well. Mm. Um, so everyone is really 
committed to ensuring that um, the gallery supports and represents the town. You said it's about to be gifted back to the town. Mm. How does that look? What, what's the significance of that? The significance really, it, it's really about um, the, the town having that sense of ownership of, it, of its gallery. And so uh, Gerard Foundation built the gallery, mm -hmm. paid for the gallery to be built, mm -hmm. employed me um, to oversee the build, and we're invested in creating a home for their collection of mm -hmm. modern British art. And, and that modern British art has been really significant to the DNA of the gallery. Mm -hmm. And they had the foresight to invest in Hastings when perhaps nobody else was going to. Mm -hmm. and. Um, with the vision of the Borough Council, and it was a vision to recognise what could be brought here, mm. uh, and a broader shared master plan of the stage, which is the space just to the side of the gallery. Um, there was a shared vision, really, for seeing the gallery being here, mm. and um, th that that has been really significant to thinking around now. What does the what is the significance of being fully independent? When we were set up, we weren't a charity, we were a not-for-profit organisation. And I think that step to being a charity enables us to really push the boundaries of what we can achieve for our communities locally and ensure that uh, as we progress, we, we have visions for free access and partial free access. We can't afford to at the moment, mm. we would love to throw the doors open. Mm. But we do make the gallery as free as we can for as many people mm. as we can, particularly those who just wouldn't afford to be able to pay to come through the mm. door. And we have concessions, significant concessions for local people as well. We want everyone to come, we want everyone to be members. And the moment we can make that free for everyone, of course, we'll be absolutely mm. delighted. Yeah, you're funded by partly by Arts Council. We are, yeah. yes. Are you one of the portfolio galleries? We're a national portfolio organisation, which means uh, we, you know, it's brilliant. Arts Council have invested in us um, and supported us for a number of years now through that transition. <coughs> and uh, without their support, the gallery probably wouldn't be here. Similarly, mm -hmm. Hastings Borough Council support the gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are our two key stakeholders, but there are other important uh, trusts and foundations that support us too. Mm. And they help us subsidise. Uh, everyone who comes through the door has a subsidised visit. Galleries yeah. are expensive to run. Mm. Um, but we are committed to developing our what we call partnership clubs, which is um, free access clubs for people who we work with in our outreach programmes. And so that's exciting. People, it's a little mm. Robin Hood, um, and we're we're so grateful to all of our um, directors' circle and patrons who support us to enable us to make the gallery free for mm. others as well. So people can join as members. They can. I mean, the best thing if you live in distance, easy travel distance, is to be a member for mm. twenty-eight, thirty pounds a year. You can mm. come as many times as you like, and this is your club. This is yeah. everyone's club. Uh, we want people to feel like there's a sense of ownership of Hastings Contemporary. Yeah, and that gives, and that also helps the con continuation of the gallery as well. If people, I know I, I have memberships to the RA and to the Tate, and it's a similar kind of thing. It's really. It's your similar. charitable, you know, donation, isn't yes. it? Yes, mm. yes, it is. Mm. So looking back over that first ten years, was there a moment or a, a significant? artist that you thought oh that was amazing that was that was the thing that really you know mm. that was what I did this job for I think that happened right at the very beginning in a way and has grown it's snowballed we uh, our, our inaugural exhibition of contemporary art was with the then 76 year old Rose Wiley Kent based Rose Wiley and um, her rise to fame has been meteoric it's been incredible to share that with her mm. uh, when when i met rose she had 40 years of work in her house that had been shown she she was by artists very much rated mm. as one of the hot british artists mm. but she certainly uh, wasn't a household name or or known um, in the way she is now and so i think that made an important moment of etching part of the DNA of 
the gallery, our commitment to showing people who might have a local connection, but actually were of international ability <coughs> and ambition. We uh, were really keen to be able to show artists who maybe hadn't had the platform that we felt they should have had. So uh, a woman in her mid to late 70s was not perhaps what people mm. would have expected for the inaugural exhibition of Hastings Contemporary. We've tried to upend expectation again and again and again and showing artists who may be unknown like Rose to the everyday, closely followed by Gillian Ayres, mm. who, who was known, but rather than just showing Gillian Ayres as people might expect, we pulled together her works from the 1950s. She hadn't seen together herself since that time, the late 1950s, and this looked like a fresh gallery from LA when we opened mm. that, that show. It felt so fresh and inspirational. So women have been a key factor in what we've shown, and, and actually many retired, you know, retirement age women, um, I think perhaps because they were the opportunity, they hadn't had the visibility artistically mm -hmm. that we would have liked. And um, we opened 10 years ago at a time when the bi sort of international biennial scene was huge. Mm -hmm. and perhaps some artists who were more locally based had, were being overlooked, particularly painters. And so we recognised that there was an opportunity to show those artists. And they were a great complement to a modern British art collection mm. of mainly painting and drawing. So the two sat hand in hand. We were sort of building appetites for both historic and contemporary art. And it snowballed from there. And of course, within that remit, it isn't just about women. There were so many men who had been overlooked in that time. Uh, we went on, actually, to show mm. Roy Oxlade, and that was another key moment for me. At our relaunch, it was Rose's husband, deceased mm. husband, Roy Oxlade, who we put throughout the gallery alongside an international, incredible uh, Danish artist, Talar. Mm. We, we, we've grown its internationalism, we want to grow those sight lines, but equally we want to be able to show artists who we believe in, who are actually quite local to Hastings, mm. and uh, either through subject matter or the fact they, they live, work and play in the area, those are really key elements to our programme and the kinds of artists that we select. Mm. So how did you find Rose then? How did you come across Rose? So you're saying, you know, she was very well known within the artist community, but not really for showing her work. So who presented Rose to you as an opportunity, as a potential? So I went to find her. And in fact, it was my husband's suggestion. Um, he's an artist and he was hearing her spoken about in the bars of Berlin oh. and knew, um, knew her, um, mm. not, not hugely, but had a connection. And so I went to find Rose when she had an exhibition opening in London at uh, the Approach Gallery, a commercial gallery, um, and asked her if she would like to be the inaugural artist. And there's a wonderful, uh, actually, that moment was captured in paint by her, and that painting went on to win the John Moores Painting Prize oh, wow. years, <laughs> a, a few years later. But that moment where uh, I went to see her and there was a, a critic there and one of her relatives, there's three women in the painting and I was in a sort of floral dress and she painted me in a huge way because it was such a significant moment and then she reflected after, but you're smaller than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, the, the, that moment was captured, that was exactly the moment that we asked Rose and she said, yes, I'd, I'd love mm. to do this. That was the inaugural show. Because I think that's what people ask me quite frequently when I'm chatting um, to them when we're doing professional development and such like this. How, do, how would I get a show in a gallery mm. like that? And we're very aware that women and older women and men mm -hmm. are underrepresented mm. in the gallery, main gallery network of um, exhibitions. Um, and I know that's something that you particularly are focused on. Matthew obviously um, 
And for those who don't know, you're married to Matthew Burroughs mm -hmm. of the Artist Support Pledge. So mm -hmm. um, a great um, initiative that was started during COVID and one that's really transformed lives for many artists. Mm. So he's tra he started that transformation clearly yeah. <laughs> beforehand, yeah. spotting people yeah. like Rose. Um, very often local artists are here, because as we said at the beginning, there are a lot mm. of artists in this tiny edge community. How would they approach you? How would they get seen by you to potentially consider having an exhibition here, those, those that maybe do consider themselves have been overlooked. Mm. It's, uh, it's complex and uh, I can see from the artist's perspective it must feel impenetrable. How does one even gain access to the people that make those decisions? I mean decisions mm. for exhibitions are made here through dialogue with our board of trustees. We mm -hmm. have a sort of steering group that looks at the artistic decisions mm -hmm. that we're making. Um, so they're not made unilaterally. But of course we put forward recommendations to, to that group. Mm -hmm. And they can come in so many different ways. Word of mouth and reputation is incredibly powerful. Being connected to artists to know who people really, who is influencing people, mm -hmm. who are the originators. That's a, a key factor for us. Who is the sort of latent talent that hasn't been shown? Mm -hmm. um, and in, I suppose if one looks back at the artists we have shown, pretty much all of them have been pioneers and influencing some of them, generations of artists. Think of Geoffrey mm -hmm. Camp, who lived in Hastings mm -hmm. for years um, with his unusually shaped canvases, really inspirational painter of the local um, scenes and um, it, it, everyone uh, you know recognizes his talent who mm -hmm. many many artists do that and he has influenced so many mm -hmm. how we, we do get approaches and um, it's not really about the look of that you know the professionalism of that presentation it's about the art the content and it's fit for us mm -hmm. and we do, I mentioned artists that live, work and play in the area where there's a local connection, mm. such as, um, it doesn't have to be directly obvious, but I would, I would bracket uh, Cara touring the art that mm. we see around us within that. Um, Cara has nothing directly related to East Sussex, but she did have a period of time living in Sussex, mm -hmm. in West Sussex. And her work has a resonance in subject matter with what the world you see around you here. Yeah. And I think I'm very mindful that a regional gallery has a key, like Hastings, mm. Hastings Contemporary, plays a key role in tourism, as well as having a resonance for the community that live here. Mm. And we try to pick exhibitions that will chime well with both groups of people, whether that's the subject matter that really enhances a day visit to Hastings, mm. Uh, subject matters of the everyday or symbolic subjects or the very fact that we believe we are putting forward artists that we believe in that we believe are the influencers that will stand the test of time and history and we do that by just looking at the art and um, making that selection that way yeah so it's not about being slick it's not about having you know the most fancy portfolio or getting it all here in a beautiful presentation or anything. It's, it's genuinely about being original. It's about originality and integrity, mm. just as the echoing what we see as the fishing beach and that yeah. long history of fishing. Mm. And we've been very focused on painting. Um, that was partly the fact that in a way we were limited, ironically, um, but that the, the building was built with the, with the mindset of holding a collection of painting and drawing, mm. so everything is favourable. Mm. Uh, we've grown it to have sculpture and all sorts of things, but that wasn't necessarily in the brief that I inherited. Mm. But actually painting at the time when we opened regionally was a bit of a missed opportunity and mm. um, great for us to be able to reap that. So we've grown, I suppose, part of our DNA is that recognition of supporting painting and painters. Mm. You um, can see that you've got an amazing space to show paintings and it's very rare to have such a 
an incredible space yes. to show the, pe the work, you know, just seeing these pieces just suspended, mm -hmm. having the opportunity to suspend pieces of work so people can walk around them. They're very sculptural. They, they are. So painting in the sculptural yes. form, holding its space. That was Cara Turing's vision. In fact, she, she had done that at Chisholm Hale previously, mm. suspended works. I love it, seeing them mm. in the round. Yeah, it's it a, makes them very um, approachable. It does. We've had mm. Gary Hume and his sort of three blob snowmen. We had some big sculptures here. Fiona Banner and her uh, sort of melted aircraft from mm. Tate. And that was into ingots that was on this floor. We're, we're only, sometimes we're limited by the fact that it's under floor heating and we don't let the, <laughs> things can't be too heavy or they'll fall through the floor. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but pretty much it's limitless. There's so much flexibility mm. with this mm. space. But painting is your first love. Painting is definitely what was the, the, the special fit for us at the mm. beginning and we've grown a reputation for it. Mm. I mentioned Talar, an incredible mm. international painter who um, we've had the privilege of showing and bringing to Hastings. Uh, we have an incredible set of exhibitions coming up and there are a lot of them are, are painting. So you've underscored the first 10 years. Yes. And it's been amazing. I can't believe we're 10 years in, mm. I have to be honest with yeah. you. It's just mad. When um, Yanis contacted me and said, oh, it's the 10 years, I was like, wow. 10 years, really? Yes. I'm obviously ageing rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> um, so the next 10 years, how far out do you programme? We, um, we're funded through Arts Council where we present a vision every uh, three years for right. the three years ahead. So we have a skeletal plan for three years and a very detailed plan 12 to sort of 18 mm -hmm. months ahead. Uh, we're, we're the, the more we can plan ahead, the better for us, and so the certainty around the ownership of our building really mm. helps us think about longer-term planning cycles because that enables us to to tour and um, to to take the export of of Hastings Contemporary to other parts of the country and the world. So we're looking at that as so well. So that's your ambition for the next ten years: is to leave Hastings and share the, the wonder of Hastings to, with. To work more in partnership with our peers, mm. whether that be generating mm. the exhibitions or receiving, and, and we'll be doing a bit of both over mm. the next few years. Mm. That's exciting. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so other people can appreciate what a wonderful place this is and you know what a wonderful opportunity it is to visit Hastings and see. And we have the, you know, the, the link of galleries. Obviously, we have mm. Towner. Yes, um, yeah. Uh, in Eastbourne and then further along you're going towards Brighton I mean, and the Delaware at mm -hmm. Bexhill. Do you work with the link work with those galleries as well? We do. I think it's something that's always been um, very dear to my heart. I think I previously worked at Arts mm -hmm. Council as the head of visual arts and um, I think I carried a sense of strategic interest in the evolution of all those other entities that were mm -hmm. within my area previously, so you don't lose mm. that affection for mm. them, um, Turner Contemporary and Margate mm. also. And uh, we have done a number of initiatives um, which have evolved in various forms. When I was at Arts Council we had um, a group called Tipsy, Turning Point Southeast. Turning Point was a policy of Arts Councils um, for contemporary visual arts mm. and we created a network in the region that enabled all the leaders of those organisations to come together. Um, that, that's evolved um, into something slightly different now, but similarly, very locally, between Towner, Delaware and ourselves, mm. we have, um, we, we, we created a coastal culture trail. We were encouraging people to cycle between them. It was probably a little ambitious between Delaware and and Towner with um, the topography and the road systems. Mm. But certainly what we wanted to do was create a distinctive brand, what we sometimes call the sort of string of pearls, that this idea that, that mm. again, um, really important for tourism to sort of, for people to understand what and where East Sussex is, because I don't think everyone outside of the area <laughs> quite understands um, that it, it's a long stretching geography. Mm. And to make a feature of that, people bemoan the travel and the lack of motorways, probably that's a virtue. 
but then yeah. equally it's harder to travel between the two. Quentin Blake has been a significant patron to the mm. gallery. Will you be working with him going forward and how will that look? I can't imagine the gallery without Quentin in a way. He, he's our artist patron and he's a, a source of inspiration for us every day. Um, I talk about Talar, our pending expectation creatively and I, I mm. put Quentin in the same bracket. He, he, we value Quentin as an artist probably more than an illustrator and that might be a a, a fine point of nuance but it's about his creative freedom and his wonderful lyrical kind of anarchic style um, just befits the town of Hastings so brilliantly and he, he opens the doors as he has with his illustrations mm. to the Road Dahl books he has defined childhood for so many people myself included I don't think I could ever have imagined when I was looking at those Road Dahl books as a child that we would have the relationship we do with Quentin. He's the most mm. generous man and the most inspiring man um, and everything you would hope for and so much more. We've done exhibitions which have been catalytic for bringing in new audiences. People who would not think a gallery is for them have come to see Quentin Blake. He uh, generously, through lockdown, he made drawings daily and gave them to us donated them to the gallery. I bought one. And they, they are <laughs> stunning, stunning drawings. So he feeds us in every way, artistically and creatively, and mm. um, the power of his drawings brings new audiences through. So yes, I, I very much hope we have another 90 years yeah, of Quentin. Wouldn't that be amazing? I, I yeah. was very privileged, as part of my relationship with yourselves, um, to interview him for Aspect mm. County magazine. Yeah. And, um, it was just the most amazing experience um, mm. to interview someone who, as you say, defines childhood mm. and was part of my growing up. I was quite in awe and I had to try and set that aside while I was, you know, doing that interview. It's very, and it can be quite difficult, but I think maybe for me, he embodies everything that you've just been saying about mm. what is right for this gallery. He provides you with the opportunity to attract in new audiences. He's an influencer. He is, yeah. And he not only influences the audience, but he's influ influenced a generation, mm. several generations probably. And so, you know, going forward, that's having him here just kind of underpins everything that you've just been saying about what is perfect for the kind of artist that you want to show in this gallery. I remember coming in and him, he did some drawings literally on the wall, didn't he? You know, yes. put the massive pieces of paper up and just did them on a stepladder on the wall. That was quite a few years ago now. Brilliant, and I, I never forget the day where I drove a cherry picker with Quentin on the top and literally we were driving along, we had a wall across here. I mean, it was brilliant. He's up for all sorts of fun. Yeah. Um, to to make art and um, I really I mean he it's this wonderful relationship where in a sense we feed each other we're delighted that he's our artist patron and he's he's still drawing I, I yeah. heard from him last week he's made another incredible batch of drawings he has just that you know for him drawing is breathing thinking and um, he does define really what what we have achieved and what we still hope to achieve for the next 10 years. Yeah, and remembering that this is fun. Yes. yes. This is not meant to be stuffy. <laughs> it's not meant to be scary. Everyone yes. is welcome. And um, creativity is a game changer. And especially now in the times that we're living through at the moment where, you know, we, we've been through COVID and we were hoping we were coming out the other side and now we've got, you know, the, the trauma around a war and mm. we've got trauma around cost of living and people really struggling, that coming into places like this and just escaping for a little while and enjoying it and having fun. I saw in the room out the back with all the lights on the wall for the babies, yeah. you know, these places are centers for fun, come enjoy them and um and really you know do we we need them they're the lifeblood of our mental health you know creativity really supports everyone's mental health and knowing that fun is front and center of that as well it's really important 
yes, to hear you say it. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Thank you so much, Liz. It's been absolutely fascinating to hear your insights on the past 10 years and how the future looks and also what you're looking for from artists. I Thank think you. that clarity mm. is really helpful. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Great to, great to meet you. And do come. Come to the gallery. <laughs> yeah. Come. It's lovely. <laughs> Although today, very stormy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.